how quartz clusters form. Quartz is a crystal that forms in a plethora of different ways, and I'll no doubt cover that rich diversity in other videos, but today I'm going to be covering quartz clusters specifically. So watch as I unpack how these clusters form in five manageable beginner-friendly steps. Ready? Seed crystals, hydrothermal solutions, geothermal heating, mineral inclusions, and environmental factors. Okay, so the genesis of a quartz cluster essentially begins with the formation of a seed crystal. It's these tiny crystalline structures that act as nuclei for further quartz growth. Seed crystals form within cavities or fractures within the rocks, where silicon-rich fluids seep in and crystallise. These initial crystals serve as the foundation upon which larger crystal clusters develop. Now hydrothermal solutions play a crucial role in the growth of quartz clusters. Hot silica-rich fluids percolate through the Earth's crust, carrying dissolved silicon dioxide, which is essentially just silicon and oxygen, silicon dioxide. As these solutions encounter suitable conditions, such as fractures or voids, they deposit silica onto existing seed crystals, facilitating the growth of the quartz cluster over time. Now, this is where heat starts to play a role because geothermal heating, often associated with volcanic activity, contributes to the formation of the quartz cluster. Heat from magma deep within the Earth's crust raises temperatures in surrounding rock formations, and it's this thermal energy that stimulates the movement of silica-bearing fluids, promoting the crystallization of quartz clusters in geologically active regions. Quartz clusters may also incorporate other minerals within their crystal structures, adding complexity and diversity to their appearance. During the growth process, minerals such as iron oxides, chlorite or hematite can become trapped within quartz crystals, imparting unique colours and patterns to the clusters. These mineral inclusions enhance the aesthetic appeal of quartz clusters and contribute to the broad diversity of kinds of quartz clusters that we can encounter. Finally, let's touch on environmental factors such as pressure and temperature, as well as chemical composition, because these can influence the formation of quartz clusters. For example, high pressures deep within the Earth's crust will favour the growth of large, well-defined crystals, while variations in temperature and mineral content give rise to the diverse array of quartz cluster formations found worldwide. Additionally, external factors like erosion and weathering can also expose quartz clusters from their original geological settings, making them accessible to collectors and enthusiasts like you and me. Let us know in the comments section what kind of crystals, minerals or precious metals you'd like us to cover next.